welcome back to the Davy Brown 990 Restoration Channel. For those of you new, my name's Barry. And as you can see, we're back in my little crammed garage here, back at home. Um, also, you'll be able to see, we have, as promised, radiator on, coolant on, alternator on, air system on. And I've got wired up, where's my buttons? I've got wired up here, or starter switch. And we've also got a little cheap warning light for our alternator because I have got the alternator wired up. When this starts, I want to be able to run this for about half an hour because I want it to get up to temperature. And then I want it to cool and I want to go around and I want to re all the heads again, all the head bolts and studs again to get it, make sure that everything's settled down nicely. Now, Tom Hart did mention he ran his engine up and a couple of months later I had a little bead of water coming out between the head and the block back here. Well I did notice Tom when I was putting my head back on there is a water gallery back here. Now it might be that you've had a head failure, a head gasket failure or it could just be that you just needed to revisit and talk down. But there is, there's a gallery comes through from the block to the head around about that location you were talking about. Now last, like my last video setting the rocker shaft clearances, I did ask the question, did anyone know why these two bolts here, or nuts, extended nuts, were different to everything else on the engine? Well, Bill gently came back Apparently Bill used to work in the Meltham factory not building the 49 engines but building I think he said the 55 engines and the 56 engines. So they used these nuts to hang an engine lifting frame on that they would then use to move this engine block around in the factory. That's why they're different. They would lift, put the lifting frame on, it would be lifted onto a dynamometer, tested Everything on the engine would be set up to make sure that the, the settings were optimised for the fuel pump, for the, uh, the output of the engine, make sure everything was working properly. Then the engine would be lifted back off the dynamometer after 30 minutes and it would be put into the frames. So that's why those two nuts are different to everything else on this engine. Right. Let's have you walk around now and see what we've done and what we've had to do to get it back to this stage. So as you can see, we've got a warning light here, just a cheap one, I think about £1.50 off eBay. Wired into the alternator, we have got our starter switch, wired on to, I'll come around here and I'll show you. So what we've done is, we've got alternator, a bulb or energizer cable comes to the small terminal on the back of the alternator. What we've done then is we've well, taken, because this has to have a live feed, we've taken it down to the large spade fitting on the back of the starter motor. So when we put a battery on, the power will come along this lead into here up through your bulb, your bulb will come on because it earths out through the alternator back to the chassis. Now, what we've got here as well, we have a heavy red cable which comes from the big spade fittings in the back of the socket and it comes back to the same terminal on the starter motor because again, that feeds directly back to the battery. So as soon as, the battery, as soon as the battery has stopped feeding the starter motor, the alternator comes up to speed. The current from the alternator will feed straight back down through the live, back to the battery. Our starter switch, we've also piggybacked onto the large terminal of the starter motor because there's a live feed there. The other cable from the switch goes to the switched side of the alternator. Uh, sorry, of the starter motor, not the alternator. 
So when we push the button, it'll pull the solenoid in and we'll get the starter motor to run. Right, so we've had to make this spacer here for the alternator because this still has the generator bracket on, um, and which is far too long for this alternator. So we made a spacer out of a 5 8 bolt, simply cut the ends off, drilled a hole straight down the middle, popped it in there at the right correct length. Now, see if we can show you the other space that we had to make because it's a bit dark down here. This here is your tensioning arm for the alternator. The pivot bolt here, we had to make a spacer for behind that between the tensioning bracket and the timing cover. Again, we used this, what was left of that bolt material, just drilled a hole, clearance hole, straight through the middle of it, cleaned it up, popped it in there. They will both need painting at some point. The delay was caused because we, we, we got it to a point where we could have put the radiator back on the air system, fill it with coolant and ran it. But I wanted to get that alternator on because I wanted the water pump to start and circulate. I want the thermostat to open. I want the water pump to circulate the water. A couple of reasons for that is, one, it will mix the antifreeze and water, which is in here. Um, we have currently six liters. Have we? Wait a minute, what's, a, what's one of them bottles? <coughs> yes. These are two litre bottles, there's three of these in the engine and it was topped off with water so that currently we're probably sitting with a layer of water on top of here in the radiator. The block should have antifreeze and hence anti-corrosive in it. But I want to run it, I want to get it mixed. Now, as I say, I did want to wait, I had hoped that we were going to be able to salvage the old alternator but it was beyond repair. This one, auto diesel, St. Lawrence Road, Newcastle, 75 quid, uh, but it was a 75 amp alternator. Um, and the Davy there, the guy is absolutely fantastic. He gave us the cables, gave us the terminals, so we could get it sorted out. Um, there was another slight delay of a day because with Gemma leaving the farm, we've had to move um, some bits and pieces from the farm into other storage. Hence, we were at the farm, we were in the garage here, and we were at well, other places of storage, trying to find the bolts for that. It all takes time, doesn't it, guys? Anyway, so we're at that position now. What we're going to do, because I have... I've got all the pipe work connected now. I've already used the lift pump to pump the diesel through. We can hear it returning in the tank. We're going to crack the pump open and we're going to bleed the pump. Even though this engine hasn't turned, there was, we, we did, well, it has turned, hasn't it? We turned it to set the rockers. So the pump will have drawn the tiniest little bit of air in, but we are going to make sure all that air is out of the system. So we're going to bleed the pump today, we're going to bleed the filters, and we're going to get it up to the injectors. Sorry about the light quality down here, guys, but I thought I'd try one of these little LED lights. See what it's like. Might put a bit of light on the situation here. Hopefully it does. We'll see in the edits, won't we? What we're going to do, I'm going to put some paper towels down here. Then we're going to crack the top bleed screw open on here. We're going to whip round the other side and pump the pump. Okay, gives a shout when that starts leaking out of there. Don't really want loads of mess. There we go. Right. I 
That'll do it, eh, boys? Get a bit up. Get one less cleaned up before it goes all over the floor. Don't like mess. I suppose this is the wrong game to be in, isn't it, if you don't like mess? Right, grab some more paper towels. Funny enough, funny enough, for an engine that hadn't been turned an awful lot, there was a lot of air there, wasn't there? Right. Okay, what we need to do now, we need to put the battery on, still on charge on the floor there, and we need to spin it over so we can get the diesel from the pump up to the injectors. We'll slacken off the injector nuts. Let's get on with it. We've got our spanners. Okay, got our spanners, batteries on, generator lights on. We'll just... <coughs> Not that I intend to start the engine at this point. Right, okay. So. All injector nuts are loose. Pump set to run. Throttle's in the middle somewhere. Let's give it a turn. See if we get some diesel up to these injectors. Little story about that battery though first. Found a battery lying around the farm. Brought it home, tested it. One and a half volts in the battery. It had been sitting outside for God knows how long. I popped it on charge. And it sat for about 24 hours taking 13 and a half volts, but zero amps. Then the next day when I came in, it was up to eight amps. And I think it sat for about a day and a half at eight amps. Then it just started slowly creeping back down and it was down to one amp there when I took it off. So it sat for about now three days at one amp. God knows whether it survived or not, but we're going to find out, aren't we, as soon as I push this button. Here we go. Whoa, smoke. Waiting for diesel to show up here. There we go. Diesel's up at number three. We'll tell you what, we'll just, as I've already said, I hate mess, don't I? Let's just pop a little towel under that. So we can collect our rubbish as we we'll go along. Right. So. Number three's got diesel at it. Let's have a look. Watch this bugger fire up. We've got a bit of a drip going on at number four there as well. Up and here. Have a quick check again. Diesel here. So we've got diesel up to all of the injectors at some point. We still might need to crack them open. yet and take some more air out of it because that made that seemed a bit quick and easy. Number two seems we have plenty of diesel added, doesn't it? Okay. One last whiz.
hockey. Sorry about that guys, you got a bit uh, wheelier there, didn't you? Right, success. Didn't want it to start. Well, I did, I did want it to start. Okay, it now runs. What I want to do now, we know we've got diesel up, we know it fires. It's a hell of a lot better than what it was, wasn't it? Because there was no easy start there, no hot air, no cold start, no cold start on the pump. Everything was just bog standard. It started. And what I need to do now, apart from go and have some breakfast, we'll come back after breakfast. We will take all of this off, including my stool, and we will run this for half an hour. But I need to take the gearbox lid off because I have put the clutch stop brake back in and even though I've got it extremely slack it is still contacting that the brake surface that it works on so I just want to make sure that there is plenty of oil around there and I'll keep putting oil on it while we're running I'll tell you what I forgot to do check the on the light went out right let's get the battery back on charge go get some breakfast get this sorted Back shortly. Right, right, we're back. For you guys, it's a couple of seconds. For me, it's tomorrow. We had so much to do yesterday. After this barked off, um, doctor's appointments, hospital appointments, pick up prescriptions, MOT the car, and of course the famous shopping at Asda. So we didn't get time to run this. So today, now for you guys, we're gonna run this. I'm going to run it for about 10 minutes, I'm going to stop it, I'm going to check the oil, check the water, then we're going to run it for another 20, 30 minutes, get it up to temperature so that I can get this head torqued down again once it's been heated. Um, we've got our battery on, we've got the oil pressure gauge mounted today so that we can see what oil pressure we're producing. Now I'm hoping that this is just going to start fairly quickly um, we will give it a little bit of cold start it's not that it's cold we'll just give it a little bit of help with the cold start this morning okay let's have a look so we've got our battery on alternator lights on oil has been checked water has been checked right let's give it a spin see what happens
Flashing oil all over the place. And it's just the side at the start pouring a rain. Let's just put this on. No gasket in there, just a just a bit to catch the, the oil getting thrown all over by the rockers. Check our oil over here. It's in the safe zone, but I want to pop a little bit in. Yep, that'll do. Top of the safe zone. Where's my cap?
stopped it there because the oil's weeping out the back here. Because obviously this hasn't got a gasket in and it's not tightened down yet. But that's that's nice and warm. Now it's starting to open there now. You can hear it. So we'll put that off. We'll have some antifreeze put into it. As I say, it's got three of these in already. Boy, go there on tight. That was never meant to come off, was it? Okay, happy with that. That barked off a lot nicer and quicker, didn't it, than it did the last time. So, obviously having the head reworked was definitely worth it. Now we might get a little bit of a drip through the bottom there today. Because there's a leak from the back of the diesel pump. One of these, leaks, these uh, injector pipes is leaking. Right, let's have that front door shut. Right, we're happy with everything that we've seen so far today. We've just got a little bit of a leak here from where this pressure gauge is plugged in, which was to be expected. And all we'll do now is we'll take things like the pressure gauge back off. Um, we'll get it settled down, we'll let it cool, and then we'll come back and re -talk the heads. But in the meantime, we're going to go and play with some sheep, haven't we? Back soon. Right, we've finished playing with our sheep for the night. The engine's cool now. I've re-torqued the head bolts and I've gotten a little bit on every single nut and bolt. These ones down the front are not easy. You've got to take the injector lines off to torque one, two, three, four down. Everything else you can get at. Those four, you've got to take the injector lines off to torque them down. So I didn't bother filming that because it was just one of them ball aches, wasn't it? Anyway, well now I'm going to put the rocker gasket back in. So, let's have a look here. Where can I put my glasses? Um, so we've got the rocker gasket. We're going to put some well seal on it. And we're going to pop it into position. That's the plan. Right, let's have a look here. This is the trouble in it when you're short of space. Wouldn't it be nice to have a reasonable bit of bench to work on? But I've got all my equipment, my sound equipment and that up there on that bench at the minute. Right, let's get the top put on this before we get well sealed all over the place. It's amazing how much oil we lost into this engine over the back. I didn't realise it was leaking over the back because the engine's sitting up on an angle. But I didn't just didn't realise how much of an angle. So we lost a bit of oil out the back. Not not a huge amount, but enough to make a puddle on the floor. Didn't tell Debs. Because we'll be getting wrong. Right, let's sit this down. Oh, 
what I've done, I've greased the inside of this lip. In fact, we're going to get some more grease and put some more grease on it. Because this might be, well, it'll have to come off again before the tractor's termed finished. And the reason why it'd be coming off again would be to check the tappets again. Probably check the head bolts again. So we're sticking one edge down the well seal and we're just greasing this edge so as to seal it. But I was quite pleased with the way it started there. Yeah? That was quite, uh, quite good, wasn't it? Just proves, you see, doesn't it, that uh, when I lapped my valves in the first time, I really didn't do a good job of it. And I was pleased and aware that when I got a bit of money, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to have the head off and away and have those seats done professionally. And I wasn't particularly bothered. I was quite prepared to pay £280-ish to have the seats replaced because I had the Gordon, the lad at Engine Services, I had said to him, just replace all the seats and Gordon came back with I'll tell you what I'll try and cut them first if I can cut them and save them we'll do that and that was I was pleased with that right let's see if we can get this on on, tighten this down, squeeze this gasket into position, right, socket, Okay, that's it for tonight, guys. Thanks very much for visiting. As always, your time is greatly appreciated when you come visit us. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give us a thumbs up. Give us a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and tick the little notification bell so you'll not miss any more videos in the future. But, as I say, don't overthink it. It's only nuts and bolts. Thanks very much guys, see you in the next one. Bye now.